So in my last video here, my super dupes finally broke the surface and are now exploring space. Now, the first thing I want to do is build a scanner station up there so that I can actually protect everything that I need below it. So that'll be things like the telescope and whatnot. So what I want to cover here is an arrangement that I've been working on over the weekend in preparation for this moment right here. So uh, essentially, this is how I'm going to clear regolith and capture iron while providing a clear view for my space scanners into space. So I'm going to go through the details of this and also how we can run power here and some other options that we can do with power, such as staggering those in order to get some you know, power out of them. So this arrangement here looks absolutely ridiculous and it's based off of a couple different videos that I did in the past. So it started with the idea of can we actually make a conveyor using doors and as it turns out, we can actually make a conveyor using doors. This was all the way back in 2017. That then evolved with the next space upgrade into how do we actually clear regolith from on top of uh, rockets and things like that or silos and we are we're able to use a similar door conveyor system in order to move that stuff off to the side. So the cool thing about this arrangement here is that it will actually destroy a good amount of the regolith that isn't already dug up, but any of the little bits here will actually be conveyed off to the side uh, right there, just like that. So using those ideas, I came up with this arrangement here. Now the whole purpose of this was actually to have an arrangement that doesn't require cooling. So this up here has no cooling loops or gas loops or anything like that. Um, and that's because these doors can just get really hot and they, they don't get damaged at all. So this is 195 degrees Celsius, 200 degrees Celsius, uh, because it does come in contact with the, the stuff like regolith and iron and whatnot, but it can only get so hot because this stuff is only so hot. So therefore it, it doesn't cause any sort of damage. Um, and different pieces of equipment down here, like the scanners, they just don't get hot. Uh, the mesh tile is insulated in space when you put stuff on top of it so it doesn't get hot, um, stuff like that. Same thing with like the solar panels, those don't get hot, batteries do, so you, you don't wanna have them up here. This is actually, I disabled those so that they don't break. Now in this example here, I have these just set side by side so you get some sort of idea of just how wide it is. However, uh, a more optimal arrangement for this is actually to stagger them three in from the edge here. So if you take a look at the light, you can see that this is casting down, there's three tiles right there. If you go to four, uh, you don't get as much power out of that one. So you see this is up at 250 watts or so. Whereas this one right here is actually hitting 380, that one's hitting 380, even though it isn't fully exposed to the full solar power up there. Now let's talk about these space scanners for just a minute here, because these this is easily the weirdest piece of equipment in oxygen not included. Uh, it, you have your scan quality, which is basically just how effective that individual space scanner is, and then you have your total scan network, which you know it will increase as you add more and more space scanners. I, ideally, you don't really need you don't really need more than 60 seconds of detection, so that's what I'm, why I'm only using two. So that gives me 67 seconds, and you know, that's plenty of time to do what I need to do. Just run a little bit of power to the doors, and boom, they can close up. Now, I have a lot of different power wires laid out here, and that has to do with the actual beam that these things use to scan into space. Um, and the top of the map actually does count as an object, so if you get these are like way too close to the top of the map here, like this right there, then it will detect it as an object and you won't get this full scan quality. Now, based on my measurements here, essentially what you end up with is, uh, starting from this point right down here, you end up with 15 up, and then from here you actually get 15 to the left. Um, to measure it to the right, you get the same up, but it's 14 to the right for whatever reason. It, it really doesn't make a ton of sense. Trust me, it doesn't really make a ton of sense. So that covers the visual beam there. Essentially, just like what I was talking about here, you can you can draw kind of a, a line right along the diagonal there. And that gives you some sort of idea of where to actually keep um, things out of the beam. Now, not everything counts within the beam, but if you were to take something like this tile here and put it right over there, you see that we go from scan quality 100% down to like 63%. And that affects our overall time from the network, which is multiple space scanners. So we can build tiles right along this diagonal right there, and you can still maintain the scan quality of 100. The problem is that, that you're now blocking the light down here, so you don't really want to do that. You can use mesh tiles, you can also use airflow tiles to do the same sort of thing if you really wanted to build that up for whatever reason. One of the weirdest piece of equipments to cause interference with the space station is a conveyor loader. So when you put that right there, you can see the scan quality goes down. Now we're down to 96%. Crap. 
And here's the wild thing. If you put it down here, which is out of the beam, watch, 87%. It actually drops down. So this thing has like an area around it and it's all the way around it for whatever reason. Uh, and that causes interference with the space scanner so that drops the scan quality. I personally thought that Clay Entertainment was going to change the way the space scanner works because I, I feel like it's a really weird artificial way to make the game more difficult. But anyhow, this is how this is how it works. So you have that space, you have that beam that you want to keep things out of in order to visually see if you're going to have a tile or whatnot placed up there. And then you have like an exclusion zone for heavy equipment. So the best way to visualize this in my mind is just go 15 up. And then for the sake of it, just to be safe, I go 15 to the right, and then you can go 30 down. So that puts us right here. And then we just go 30 to the left, and there you have it. So that's the area you need to keep heavy equipment out of. Now that does not include all tiles. You can actually put tiles off to the side of this thing, and it will still be okay. So you see this right here? We're still at 100% because it's not within the beam. Um, however, if this was within the beam, you'd see it would cause an interference. Boom. So other things that can cause an interference with the scanner is not necessarily just solids, but liquids as well. So if I take crude oil and I just put, let's say, 100 grams of it right up there, what we'll see is that the scan quality should maintain about 100%, which is good. It's just a little drop of liquid up there. And if I take a look at the Lux, it's really not making a difference at all. Uh, just a little bit. You can see there's just a, a just a little bit of difference in lux. So if I put 1.5 kilograms of crude oil up here, you can see we still have a scan quality of 100%. But as soon as we step over uh, that to, let's say, 1.6, watch what happens here. You can now see that we went from 100% down to zero. So if you build up too much liquid above this space scanner, that can cause it to affect its scan quality percent. However, you can see here if the crude oil is 600 kilograms in one tile and 1,000 in another, we still go back up to scan quality of 100%. So if I expand this out just a little bit more, you can see we have less and less. And if I paint in more crude oil to one spot, it really is just about how much liquid is in one tile. So there's a certain amount that it can actually just see through. I, I'm not going to go through all the different liquids and everything there, but just keep that in mind if you are trying to use some sort of system that has liquid above the space scanner. Liquid will also affect the amount of illumination that makes it through that tile. There's a pretty good guide for that over here by Thunderlock, where he did a, a fair bit of testing on different materials and how much light actually makes it through there. So I'll have a link to that in the description below. Okay, so here's another example of the same sort of thing that I was trying to work on. Um, so essentially what I'm doing here is I'm just using robo miners and auto sweepers in order to, you know, collect and sweep and dig up any of the material that will actually drop down here. So you can see that there's window tiles that are down here and because they are uh, below the space scanners here, they don't actually cause interference with it. Same thing with all of this liquid that I have. I have a fair amount of liquid down here. So the idea of this build is that the regolith and stuff down here will actually drop into this area and that will generate heat and then I can convert that heat into energy down here in a steam turbine. And that's actually how I re remove the heat so that it doesn't get too hot because it can get hot enough even if you build these auto sweepers and robo miners out of steel, they will eventually get hot enough to cause damage. And to get around having conveyor loaders, I'm actually using storage bins using different priorities. So what you'll see in this arrangement here is the auto sweepers actually pick up material and then move it from one bin to the next in order to get it to the ends here where I'm using an automatic dispenser, which mind you, uh, is not picked up as heavy equipment by the space scanner, whereas the conveyor loader is. So I did have a conveyor rail down there at one point. The other thing about the conveyor rail, uh, loader is that it will absorb a lot of the heat that from the stuff that you put inside of it. So it, it will heat up very, very quickly. Whereas the automatic dispenser doesn't. So, yeah, anyhow. So you can look at this automatic dispenser and look at how cold it is. It's at 24.4 degrees Celsius, even though it's sitting on a tile that's 125 degrees Celsius. And the, the material that drops into it will just fall out to the side and basically fall back to the asteroid, wherever that might be on your map. 
Okay, so here we are at the end of the meteor storm. We'll see this regolith drop down. And you'll see how this sort of traditional like system works here. And how it's digging through things and unentombing things that might have accidentally been covered. And it's these arms are working to move stuff from one storage bin to the next to the next. And you can see that stuff will actually make it off to the end. So there you go. Boom. It's just kind of a funny system that it how it works like that. But it was at this point that I still had some spots here that even though I could dig to the top of this mesh tile, unfortunately, I couldn't get the material off of it. So that's when I started to remember back to that idea of that all the stuff I've done with the doors, whereas if once you put the door up there and you actually close it, it bumps the material one way or the other. So I was actually able to use that to kind of clear it out. And that's when I noticed that this space scanner uh, will not detect a open door. You can see if it's closed, it's not a big fan of it. But if it's open, then it, you know, doesn't care. And I guess that one tile here is a little bit too high. That was supposed to be lower or something like that. I don't know. You kind of have to play this like weird game of can this see, you know, right? So oh, I can see here, I can see here, I can see here. So I'll generate a picture of this so you guys can kind of copy this format if this is what you want. There's other arrangements too. So this one probably isn't the best. Okay, so with all of that knowledge, here's my final arrangement. I actually learned just a little something more here in my testing uh, because I'm you know, always learning something more. Um, what I actually ended up doing is put these doors horizontal. They actually affect the regolith in a different way. Uh, when they actually go to cycle, they will clear out more regolith when it drops down on top of them in this case that they're closed. The vertical doors don't necessarily always do that. So I think horizontal doors on top, not only is it cheaper, I think it clears the regolith just a tad bit better. Um, however, I ran the vertical doors here for over 100 cycles without a problem or anything being damaged. So uh, it's just a little bit better in my opinion. So this is the arrangement that I'm going to go with. Uh, as far as the automation, I connect both of these space scanners together, run to a not signal, and that then runs the doors up top here. Um, over here to run the doors that are actually going to clear the regolith and convey it to the left I run it through a filter gate that's set to 60 seconds I then run it to a not gate which is connected to the exclusive OR gate so that's the one that starts with XOR um, and then that you know also goes over here to a buffer gate which is 60 seconds right there um, so that arrangement looks just like this and then once you get to the doors, you end up using a bunch of buffers. You kind of just go up and down, up and down, up and down. So this will cause the automation signal to just step through all of these doors and close them sequentially from right to left. So you set all of these to one second. You could just set one and then copy the settings and paste it to all of them. And boom, you're done right there. So it's not the cheapest thing in the world, but considering you don't need to run any sort of cooling loops to it, it's actually fairly reasonable uh, because the amount of equipment you have up here is not really that intensive. Now one other station you'll probably want to throw up here is something like a telescope. And if you put that on something like airflow tiles or mesh tiles it doesn't block any of the light. So you still get the power out of it. Pretty fancy. Anyhow, so we've detected a meteor storm. So here we go. Uh, we're going to build up regolith, build, build up iron. You can see that there's nothing down here. What we want to see is that we get a, a little bit of regolith and we also get the iron out of there. There's also some material that's down here from deconstructing. I think it's copper. So hopefully I see the copper make its way all the way out here to the left as well. Okay, so here we are at the end of the storm. So the automation has flipped again from the space scanners here since it's looking at the meteor showers. Once you get rockets, you'll have another option down there. And you can see the regolith drops down here, just magically disappears. However, if we go uh, to the light overlay, you can see that it is actually built up down here. So the regolith is still still exists, um, but we're going to destroy it now so that it doesn't block the light. So you can see the automation signal, let me just slow it down, has gone to its sequence. Um, so both of those are true, so therefore we're closing the doors, and this is how the buffer gate uh, will then flip that signal and open the doors back up after it's finished conveying. So what we're seeing is all of these doors close. And one of the thing I don't like about using the horizontal doors here is that it can take longer for this stuff to get out because the copper didn't really move that far over. So unfortunately it kind of popped up, but we can see stuff is conveying over here to the left. So you can see the iron is actually right there. We'll let this run a few times and see just where that iron ends up. Overall, it should eventually continue to convey all the way to the left. If you use Durower's vertical 
top and bottom, it has a better chance of making it all the way to the left, whereas this might only make it one step. So what we're going to do is we're just going to set this to fast and watch to see where that iron is and see how long it takes to make it from near the middle of this arrangement over here to the left. We actually did get some of the material out over on the right, but that was right at the edge. And the thing I should mention here is that the light is now completely exposed, so we got rid of all of that regolith, which was the real advantage there, because um, we don't have to deal with it, essentially. Okay, so we're at our next storm. I'll just kind of leave my mouse right here so we get some sort of comparison. There we go, we've detected the meteors. Oh, guess not. Should probably put a filter on that. All right, so now we're just going to get, this one didn't have a whole lot of regolith. It was actually just over here on the right. Uh, but there we go. Do, 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 do. Oh, yes, and you can see that iron, boom, conveyed all the way from right here off to the left. Now we do have one tile that actually got blocked up by some regolith. So the next time this sequence runs, uh, that'll be cleared out. You could also expand your automation over here to cycle the doors twice if you really wanted to, but you can see how, how relatively simple um, you know, using doors is. You don't have to cool anything down. You don't have to try to figure out where the, uh, where the robo miners are going to be, where the sweepers are. So I think that's the arrangement I'm going to, going to go with. Okay, so my thoughts on this method, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a little bit cheesy, but then again, um, the space scanner is kind of a weird piece of equipment. And I think it's art artificially made more difficult than it really needs to be. I think if we had some sort of cover that could potentially just go over this thing and it takes like, I don't know, 1800 watts or something like that in order to run, um, in order to cover it up, I think that would be a, a much more straightforward way to actually deal with a space scanner than using doors and stuff like that. But hey, this is the way it is for now. And it, you know, we're in the launch preview of the game, so it might be the way it is for a very long time. So this is the arrangement that I'm going to go with here in the Super Duplicate Megabase. Hopefully you found this video somewhat informative or helpful. And if you did, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. If, if you have your own space scanner arrangement that you'd like to share, maybe consider swinging by the Discord channel. There's a lot of people sharing a lot of really useful information over there. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar, out.